Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new Pantheon Academia Talkback, where we are... Yes, we are going to be answering your questions, uh, talking about our lovely campaign, and just kind of shooting the shit for a little bit. And Not like we haven't been doing that for the last 30 minutes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm your host, your uh, vice principal, and your bald bitch, Stephen Pope. Uh <laughs> Thrilled to be here, thrilled to have this beautiful table, and thrilled to talk about it with all of them. Uh, let's go ahead and meet everyone, starting with someone who has been called cool, fly, sexy, and amazing. And let me tell you, the rumors are true. Critical Bard. Oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> uh, I am in LA right now, so I'm not at my normal rig, and I probably sound weird audio-wise, but deal with it because I'm here. Uh, what's up? My name is Omega Jones, also known as a Critical Bard. Uh, I used to play Kawame Yakinyemi. Um and you know his story is done, but we still here. Um, I don't I don't really know how to intro now. Now that we're not actually playing the game, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Weird. That's that that that's me. Also, thank you for my my Millie Rock. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, the most the most value the MVP of the school safety squad. Ah. Mm -hmm. no, I, uh, no, no, no. That's no. awesome. that, 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 is, that 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 is Manny hands down. <laughs> Next How dare. up. Next up, there a beautiful fall day in the middle of summer. It's Aki. Eee, bet your ass. What's up, everybody? It's Aki, your boy. Uh, I was, uh, and, and and a little part of me will always be uh, Emancipation uh, Brown, uh, also known as Manny. Uh, your your sweet sweet sweetheart with you know all all the leadership potential in the world and none of the desire to actually do it um <laughs> yeah i had such a good time playing them and i had such good time playing them with all of you and i'm really excited to answer some questions and hang out with my friends uh, well we're all in like a 10 to 15 mile radius I know <laughs> it's weird. true. We were talking about just before we went live. We were talking about the fact that we never played this game in person with each other. We no. never sat at it like from beginning to end. We never sat at a table together. I still have never met Mika in person. Neither have I, and it's I haven't seen either. Highly and recommend. CV is going to meet uh, Mika tomorrow in person. I know. So. That, For something we, I don't know if we've announced yet. It has been announced. <laughs> Oh, it has I been know, good. I good, don't think good. That, I don't think that his has gone up, but his name was in the yeah. Oh, okay, oh, yeah. so they're both running for Congress, in case you uh, hadn't heard. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Against each other. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for the debates before I decide who I'm voting for. There. Anyway, we are gathered here today uh, to remember R.I.P. Nika. How you doing? Uh, did I die? <laughs> That's your screen name. It's not my fault. Uh, hi everyone, I'm R.I.P. Mika. Um, you know me as the wonderful little Dahlia Wingrove, who is no longer with us. She's still alive, but she's no longer with us. <laughs> she's off on her own. So dramatic. Very. Yes. Perfect. Oh, what was me? She's off being a supporting <laughs> character in the lives of the people she loves. No, That's sweet. And I last, mean, but isn't that oh. not true of all of us? Yes. Fair enough. Last, but certainly not least, they are mostly charming, mostly cool, mostly Eric. Hello, everybody. I'm also here. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Great. And scene. And scene. Thank you. Uh, uh, you going to tell people who you were? Hi. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, I, I'm Eric, and I played Lennox Thatcher. Uh, the, he started out as a captain of the football team, you know, real real uh, sportsman. And, uh, you know, now he's like, he's, he's, he's very different. <laughs> he ended that show very different than he started. Oh, he's he's a psychic queer. A growth. Who incredible, amazing journey. Sorry. I'm just is gonna maybe right. going to be a therapist? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Oh, interesting. I love that for him. See, I just want to listen to, I just, I can't wait to hear any and all questions that are about Lenny and to hear Eric's 
uh, because I don't think, I don't know if I ever explicitly stated this, but Lenny ended up being like my favorite character. Like, just Lenny was great. Lenny was it. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's start with like a little talk about Lenny real quick. I'd like to do this for every character, but let's go ahead and let's start with Eric. Eric, let's start with Lenny. Um, Lenny had probably the biggest change throughout mm -hmm. like the whole campaign. Mm -hmm. And he also was kind of, he kind of became one of the more tragic characters on the show. Um, where'd you get the idea for Lenny and this like weird relationship with his dad and his brother? And I think a lot of that, that comes organically. I think I do this a lot for, for, especially for shows is I pick something, I pick a, a voice and an, or an affectation first, and then I build from there. And then as like, as you start, any of these shows, you know, if you do a one shot, you can be like, oh, I'm I'm the clown king of, of crime. <laughs> but like, you know, after season two or three, you know, that you got to have some growth with that character. So it's just it was just incremental. You know, Lenny started out as a very like one note person. But as soon as you improvise it for, you know, an episode or two, you have to you have to do more with it. So you have to start adding things. It's like, well, he's, he wants to, he's kind of a, like, he's a rich guy. Well, what does that say? He's got a, he's got, definitely has a rich parent then. And is it old money or new money? Well, it's old money. So that's a very specific kind of rich parent. It's like, like, well, what, you know, it's like, he's into sports. Well, you know, it's like, okay, so what's the reason he's into like, I don't like he's, he's at a boarding school. What does that say about his relationship with his dad? You know? So you just build that slowly over time uh do you regret that we never actually saw his dad on screen no i like that he wasn't there i mean because we could have done a whole like you know evangelion he's the true villain thing and that would have been interesting but i think it's more interesting that he doesn't need his parent you know because sometimes yeah. sometimes your parents suck and you don't need them in your life yeah, I like that his dad never kind of redeemed or got more evil. He just plateaued at being a shitty dad, and so that's like pretty realistic sometimes. Yeah. You can't you can't change your parents. Sometimes they're just kind of really? who they are. I love that. I love the fact that like because his dad was never shown on screen. He instead he instead showed up in the way that people reacted to how mm -hmm. nobody spoke about him. <laughs> like he was he was as much a a real full like a fully realized character, like as any of our other NPCs, simply because of how rich like uh, Lenny's you know relationship was portrayed like how richly yeah. like Eric portrayed their relationship with each other just through simple like one off sentences that he would say sometimes yeah and then like I, Steven would have npcs that would show up like you know stepmom or yeah or yeah. the assistant or like and so you see the shadow of his father on these people as well mhm mm and it's really cool because it that's a level of storytelling that people don't realize is just as uh, poignant um not and don't take advantage of as nearly as enough yeah, it's like you—you you can have a backstory, but not all of it has to be seen. It can get to be felt. It can be—it it can be informative of how the story goes. And that specific piece of Lenny, uh, though never seen, was always informing the way Lenny acted and how people reacted to situations X, Y, and Z. And that was just really cool to see. I also think in, in storytelling less can be more a lot like the less you know about lenny's dad the more you can infer what you think that that is and you can always come up with a better idea than than i can about like oh man he probably does this you know if you have lenny fact uh lennox thatcher fan fiction involving his father please just you know send us links we, we please we're so curious to know what your imaginations have created i did initially want to around see towards the end of season one, beginning of season two, uh, about the time you should you joined us, uh, critical critical part. Um, I did contemplate maybe bringing him in, 
but I ultimately decided against it because I liked the idea that he's just kind of this background radiation in your life that, you know, he doesn't affect who Lenny is. Lenny is his own person. Yeah. Yeah. Anymore. Like he has done his damage to Lenny, but Lenny is finding himself now. And there's nothing to be gained by having this character show up. At least that's it was how a it really kind of good out. example of like chosen family over given family. Like, yep. I didn't remember. I, sorry, go it would have it would have kind of like um, I don't know. I think I would have disliked it if his dad came back and either tried to be a better father, simply because Lenny had already seemed to move past that and like wanted to find a life outside of that, and, like find his worth outside of his father's approval. And I think that would have kind of like mellowed or harshed the story that we were showing with Lenny and with like Lenny's growth as a person from the first episode to the last. Yeah. Yeah. I think I remember you explicitly explicitly stating, Stephen, that you just had no interest in playing him. Um, you were like not about it. And it's I think that was also for me. Yeah, and I think that was also indicative of like the kind of tone we were trying to carry throughout the story as well. That like things could get serious, but they would never get like they would never get bad. Like mm -hmm. like the negative feelings would never become like super toxic. And on, and on top of that, it, you allow by not showing Lenny's father, you gave Lenny a choice. Because a lot of times when you bring in that 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 stain that you as a DM or a GM think a player wants to clean, you're now like pushing a narrative onto them versus just allowing that story to be told. So with if because Lenny could have easily been like, Yeah, I want to talk to my father, and then he would have came in. But he never did that. You you allowed that story to just, you know, be what it needed to be without trying to influence it. Um yeah. And I got to say, that was all you, Eric. Like, you really did. You made this character and not just his relationship with his dad, but his relationship with everyone really. I kind of feel like Lenny was a bit of the heart of the team. Like, even though Manny and Dahlia and Kwame were all like incredibly vital and loving characters, and I loved all of them, for me, it was like, if Lenny's not here, this is a completely different team. Yeah, I it think it changed the with, dynamic so much. I think with him, the thing I tried to do, and I don't know why I chose it, but I tried to just have him say as little as possible, like not not talking a like not not that he was quiet, but trying to use as like as few words as possible, say as little as possible, dumb everything down as much as possible, and just try and convey ideas as simply as possible. And I think just because that's I, just the tone of which I wanted him to, to talk. And I think that that just helped with the storytelling and the role playing, because it's like he just comes in, says a few words and changes the dynamic of whatever the scene is. Which I, I loved, I loved. And I will say one of my favorite moments was in the last episode or the second last episode. I can't remember. It was a two part finale. So I'm right either way. Um, Kwame was explaining something. I think Kwame was explaining like angels and divinity and everything to Lenny and Quinn. And it was just like, uh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was the funniest fucking thing. It's like, oh, yeah, sick. Oh, tight. Oh, the girl. Yeah, tight. I love that. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jesus. They really are brothers, these they, two. They real, I loved playing Quinn, by the way. I loved him. Um, you know, I have a, I have a question, if you, if you don't mind me asking. Go uh, for it. Go for it. This is roundtable. So, uh, Lenny's divinity was Ninkazi, you know, and you really leaned into, why are you vacuuming right now? <laughs> Sorry, um, you really leaned into the 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 alcoholic aspect of her. I mean, you you had moments, obviously, but like you know, it's always like with beers and things. And I think obviously that also was shaped around the original Lenny that we knew, who you know, this 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 jock kind of you know, not tough guy, but you know, this person Slightly who just humanistic. yeah. Uh, how do you think your relation Lenny's relationship to Ninkasi 
grew from season one to the end. It it was interesting because like I think a lot of that's all internal because I think of of the divinities, mine were the ones that like didn't have a lot of like NPC representation. Like they weren't out in the world much, unlike mm-hmm. many others. Not that they had any of them had a lot. I think. Yeah, but the original concept is I wanted like him to be kind of a jock party boy, but then that's just not the character I ended up playing because that's just not where I went with it because that's just how improv works sometimes. Uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think it, it was interesting because I wanted to like I was like okay, so he's got this divinity, this like then this is like the first positive relationship. Like he's like it's it's a weird it's something that lives inside. So what is that? How does that affect? So it's like he's not gonna not drink. So it's like what is that? What is so alcohol is like this miss because I I got I've been getting a lot into history and alcohol is interesting because it is it for as long as we can look back we have been brewing alcohol like for for hundreds of thousands of years you know we have Mm -hmm. been doing it so it's such an important ritualistic part of human society so i tried to incorporate more of that aspect and less of like a teenage party yeah plus alcohol back then is nothing like what we have now yeah that's and that Mm -hmm. was nothing i was like yeah the the beer that you drink from him is it's it's just liquid bread (laughs) because it was it was considered to be like a meal substitute yeah i mean it was like, I mean, even even back in, you know, when people were moving to America, they were drinking beer, not because they liked it. I mean, they did like it, but because they was like, uh, you know, if I drink beer, I won't get a stomach ache, unlike water. I, I, don't, I also find it interesting that you mentioned that it's kind of ritualistic because having a drink at a party is not really a ritual per se, but it is kind of a moment for a lot of high schoolers it is yeah it's something that i not that i'm encouraging teenage drink it's a it's a rite of passage in in some in some regards i didn't really like yeah i didn't drink in high school i didn't drink uh i think i was 19 the first time i drank which i guess technically is underage but i i I really like i didn't really i stopped drinking for like eight years just because i didn't care for it wasn't until i think it was 30 when i started like actually drinking for like like an adult does and i was like oh okay i i kind of see it now i kind of understand its <laughs> uses and it it has not many but it has a few and it can be abused but it is it, i see why people do this now i will say the one thing i regret doing to lenny was having his dad remarry <laughs> I re- that was, I don't usually feel like, when I do something to a character, I'm usually like, yeah, no, it's going to be good for the story. I actually felt mean when that information came out. I love that. I love that. Because that's just like, because that came at such an interesting time because we're like two seasons maybe into the show. Lenny is coming into his own. He's no longer playing football. He's got all these magical powers and these great friends. And then his old life is like, oh, I'm I'm your new mom now. He's like, that's I don't I'm I'm 17. You're 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 a stranger to me and always will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, when did you decide Lenny was uh, going to start exploring his sexuality? Um. I always kind of, uh, I don't do a lot of like romance in RPGs. Um, and I don't ever set, like, I, I try not to set, like, my ki- this character is straight, this character is this. Is a, so I just kind of like, I'm like, so I think it was like Dahlia was like, oh, look at how hot Spiro is. And I was just like, sure, Lenny thinks so too. Why not? Who cares? I usually, like, my default in RPGs is like, whatever, my character is like, pan or buy or who gives a shit i don't care whatever is the 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 most interesting choice right now and i just like the idea that that lenny is jealous of spiro but not for like the reason that he would you would normally see in this this sort of situation so that was the the initial impetus to that and then it just it grew like everything always does i like that i like that um, it's funny you bring up Spiro because I'd love to start 
moving over to our beloved Mika. Now, I got to tell you, Dahlia, I don't think I've ever seen someone commit to a character so much. Listen, like, I have you not made decisions <laughs> that I were like, I was like, why? And then it's been 10 years since I was able to be a theater kid in high school. And it's 10 years <laughs> since I ended up just, I need to get this energy out. I have to. <laughs> you valid. Valid. <laughs> I, Dahlia was adorable. I love Dahlia. Um, so it sounds like Dahlia takes a lot of inspiration from your own high school experiences. I think she takes inspiration of who I wanted to be oh. in high school. Because <laughs> I definitely wasn't like the enthusiastic theater kid. I'm not going to be the one that's like, oh, I was a theater kid. I didn't have many friends. I had friends in like every clique in high school. Yeah, I was just the weird kid and was charismatic. And I, I wanted to play a character who, it's like Dolly is who I imagined myself being in high school, but not who I became or was. And it was really cool to play that out and to be like, actually, you know what? I'm glad I was me because Dahlia has some issues. <laughs> Dahlia has some things she needs to get through. <laughs> I am very curious to see what type of person Dahlia would grow up to be. I gotta be real. I I was thinking about that this week, actually. I think I know uh, she said something about it in the finale, but I think with everything that went on, she probably had a lot of sit down talks with Persephone and Brigid and Morpheus about like what makes her happy, and she looks back on everything she went through with the safety squad and being the supporting character in fights and like pumping her friends up instead of being the one to rush in and be the hero was always what made her happiest in fights and like fulfilled her. And that's why like she didn't chase after any more main parts in theater after the finale. She, she realized that she likes to support people more than be the main person and the star on the stage, which is like real big change for her. Really is. But I think like seeing her be like the supporter instead of chasing after a dream that was probably never going to happen because <laughs> it's not in the cards for her was uh was like the best place I could see her going. I got another question for you because uh for a table that's all like, oh, I don't really usually do romance. We ended up with a lot of romances on this show. Yeah. Uh and for the Do first time, I wasn't in any of them. Hey, that's a lie. You're with Loki and you know it. No, no, absolutely not. That was you, that was like a big sibling, younger sibling relationship on my own. Really? I, I thought that was like that just was two completely. asexual, aromantic people who were like, I like you and date everyone else. It was a fair platonic relationship, but it was not romantic in any like, for, like no. Not even a little bit for Manny. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I do have to ask, do you see Spiro and Dahlia working out in the long run? I I do. Because <laughs> there's a reason Hades and Persephone chose them. They're, they're kind of faded, and I feel like with Hades and Persephone as their guide through life, they can make it work. Aww. I think it's really cute. They'll move to France together. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, especially I, I, because... Okay. I was just gonna say that, like, uh, um, I went to see Hades Town uh, last last week, and yeah, and had a little random text in our little group chat about how I felt like Spiro and Dahlia were an inverted Orpheus and Eurydice. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, so. and I was just gonna say that, I mean, like, yes, the, the origin of their romance is a lot, um, but like arguably the most like long lasting relationship in Greek mythology. Yeah. Good relationship in Greek mythology. It's like people yeah. villainize Hades because he's like the god of the dead. It's like, no, they chilling. <laughs> they chilling. Well, there's like, like a lot know. of different ways that you can perceive the myth from like the original texts. Yeah. And my favorite way to perceive the myth is that they did fall in love. It wasn't like he forced her into the underworld. 
they just sort of lost their way at some point, which there's ups and downs in every relationship. But mm -hmm. they realize that there's a give and take in relationships. Like Persephone needs to give up six months of, their, of her life and Hades needs to give up a little bit of his kingdom to her. And so like, just, uh, I think I think Spiro and Dahlia go through that as well in their long lives together. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think I Toss revealed- up. Oh, what's up, what's up? Real quick, toss up question then. Who is the child of Dahlia and Spiro, and what is their divinity? Oh. Oh, God. Do they have I kids? Think, That's a good question. I think it'd be great if they were not, like, an art kid at all. They weren't musical. They weren't, like, an actor. They were super into STEM, wanted to become an astronaut. Yeah. yeah. Build cars. They like, yeah, they're an astronaut kid. Spaceships all the way. And Spiro oh, and Dahlia are like, um, what do we do here? I don't know. <laughs> but I just realized that I 100% see Dahlia becoming Spiro's like manager or something like that when Spiro makes it big oh, yeah. as a musician. Oh, yeah. Like, that's what I can see happening. Like a extremely healthy Ozzy yeah. and Sharon relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not the '80s. The drugs are different now. Um, so I, I think I told this to my table, but I don't think I've ever told this to the audience. Spiro was supposed to be a villain. Mm -hmm. When I first made Spiro, he was supposed to be an antagonistic force in the series, and then I just had way too much fun with him, and I could tell fell in love with him. everyone was having fun with him. Listen, the moment you said long hair with a guitar, I was like, Steven, this character's mine now. I have taken him. <laughs> you cannot do anything bad with him. <laughs> it was, and it was fun having a character that could flirt with Kwame and also yeah. flirt with Lenny and it didn't, but like they were, they were Dahlia's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think one of my favorite Dahlia moments, uh, apart from the big speech at the end, was when you did that, I don't want to call it a parody, but you did that uh, monologue from Hamilton yep. in the Dahlia voice. <laughs> it was very charming. In the eye of a hurricane. <laughs> Why does it still sound like Midland and Wilmer? It does. If this I ever gets into the movie, Lin Manuel well. Miranda will play Dahlia. I mean, same energy, really. <laughs> One of my favorite moments was Dahlia forcing us all to audition for the musical. Oh my God, yes. the musical episode. The musical yeah. episode was so good. I had a CV sitting right next to me, right mm -hmm. here. I remember that. It was great. Omega, you doing that, like, I'm a good singer, so I know how to be a bad singer bit. Yeah, yeah. Killed me. Fucking I'm like, Kwame's right. not a singer. Kwame is so far from a singer. So. <laughs> like, no. Not at all. Not yeah, at all. So, but it's very, it's just very like, you know, a basic, you know, ability <laughs> to carry a tune. Is, I guess this is a question for all of us. Would your character listen to music in the car? Because there are people that don't listen to music in the car. Oh, oh yeah. I love that. Kwame definitely listens to music in the car. Okay. I think Manny listens to podcasts, but not music. I see no, that. I have friends who have gotten in their car and they don't turn anything on the radio. Just silence. Yeah, well, someone and who I'm does like, that must be a total weirdo. Oh, you're, you're one of those people, you, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a person quite... doesn't want a distraction while they're <laughs> operating a motor vehicle going 60 or 70 miles an hour? <laughs> okay, honestly, Eric's the safe driver. Good to know. I'm hey, just, I'm safe. I'm just not, I'm not a good driver, so I don't play anything to distract me. That's valid. Okay. At least you are a, a self-aware enough to know, you know, and you're not trying to put nobody in danger, including yourself. But, but does Lenny? Yeah. 
Oh, I don't know. Um, I try to think, like, I'm so bad with music. I don't, like, I don't I can see him to... being a music person. I can see him I... being a music person. I Because I'm such not a music person, it's hard for me to know, like, what he's he top would 40s. To. Yeah, he, top he's top 40s. 40s yeah. What sense. I was honestly going to say is that I feel like it, for Kawame, it's, it, it depends on the situation. There's always going to be yeah. music. If Kawame's by himself, you know, he's vibing to what he wants to vibe. He likes jazz. He likes, you know, uh, every now and then he likes a nice musical. He likes classical. He likes a, 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 a long range. If Lenny's in the car and Lenny always gets shotgun in, in Kawame's car, uh, he gives the radio to Lenny. If he doesn't like a song, he'll veto that song. But uh, he gives the radio I to Lenny. I feel like Lenny... <laughs> is the person that would have a single CD that he's been listening to the, for the past five years. He put it in his How car. How dare you call me out like this? Like, yeah, that's... I already have a CD. I don't need another one. That's. I've been listening to Linkin Park Meteora for the last eight years. Oh my <laughs> God. Uh, so you, so you... I just lost it's... all of my skin. It's Nika like... Laid me mm. It's like you went back in time checked my van out to see what cd i had in it actively at any moment we must have had the same van yeah oh wow <laughs> Wait, oh my god must absolutely have oh my god i feel like i have just been stripped naked on stream <laughs> <laughs> it's always lincoln park meteora it's I've, never, <laughs> I've never felt so seen before and not in not in this way not, that i want to be seen. yeah no no i don't want to be seen like this way thank you very much take it away <laughs> If you've never listened to Linkin Park Media, or what have you done with your life? Um, please go and amend that as soon as the stream is over. Yeah. Obviously, you've never been 14. You've never been 14. <laughs> you just skipped that year. Okay. You know, as someone who got emotional when My Chemical Romance released their first single in over a decade, I I get it. I get it. I fully get it. Um, actually, real quick, I have themes, I have two theme songs for everyone. For every character. I okay. I do this. I subscribe to the Avery Adler School of Game Mastering where be a fan of the t characters. Be a fan of your players. And I obviously loved every single one of your characters. But uh, for Dahlia, I had two songs. I had okay. Opera Singer by Cake. Okay. I remember and, you saying something about that one. And Stadium Love by Metric. I just these heard that one. I, I recommend both of them. They are both opera singer is to me kind of like Dahlia at her best worst. Yeah. Where it's like, <laughs> yes, I am amazing. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> glad we can all acknowledge how great I am. Yeah. And Stadium Love is her when she was like, No, fuck you. I want my boyfriend back. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love that. Uh for Kwame. Uh, I have Running Up That Hill, uh, Meg Myers cover, and I'm aware that song is suddenly popular because of Stranger Things. I'm glad people are discovering Kate Bush. <laughs> I'm not being weird about this. Everyone can get off my back. <laughs> I'm fine. You know, The Hounds of Love is one of the greatest albums of all time, but you know, it's fine that you discovered it through Stranger Things. It's fine. <laughs> Kate Bush is the patron really saint of weird art kids See, everywhere. I, always will be. I, this is the reason I, 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 this is a polo shirt because it's also angel song. It was. Um, the other song for Kwame was safe and sound by capital cities. Okay. I can kind of see okay. that. For me, Kwame was always just kind of, I don't mean to embarrass you. Critical part. I thought he was one of the most romantic characters I've seen at a table. And I don't mean just because he was in a romance at the table. I just mean like romantic and kind of the literary sense. I thought he was yeah. beautiful and tragic and I thought you played it so well. And so those, both of those. Uh, now for Manny, we have Mr. Brightside by The Killers and Drop Pop Candy by Hatsune Miku. Oh, I don't know how to feel about the fact that you had a Hatsune Miku, Miku song for your... For, for Manny, but <laughs> just so fun. they were so cute. You played them so fucking cute. And lastly, for Lenny, we have "Be Nice to Me" by The Front Bottoms, and "I'm Not Okay, I Promise" by My Chemical Romance. See, Oof. run it all back together. 
Because, like, Kwame was romantic, Lenny was a tragedy. Uh, and as long as I'm having a horrible bout of ADHD and distracting us from everything, uh, we have a question from the chat from Mel Pamino. Uh, I always wondered if people come up with their divinities first or their host. Okay, good question. Where'd you guys start? I think I started with Persephone. Yeah, with yeah I think I started with my divinity as well. Because Same. I... I picked Ma'at before I knew I was going to make Manny not exactly bright. <laughs> I yeah. thought there would be a fun irony of giving somebody as cerebral to Ma'at to somebody like Manny. Yeah. I originally Dolly was going to be like the little cottage core girl. Really? Her name is Whoa. Dolly of Windgrove. She's named after flowers and nature. Um, but then like the first episode when we started playing, I was like, no, this is a theater kid. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> out. I feel like I had the exact same thing. Cause I was, I was like looking, I was like, I want to play something interesting. You know, I want to play something that I've never seen or is, is, is huh. not just another Greek God. Like I've been doing every time I get a chance to choose. So I was like, oh, okay. A goddess of beer. That's really interesting. Well, like, who is that? It's like, okay, it's like a party. His name was Lennox Thatcher. He was supposed to be like a, a, a rich party asshole. Captain yeah. of the football team. He was supposed to be like, uh, you know, a, not spoiler, but like there's a basketball like captain in the new Stranger Things. He was supposed to be that guy, you know, the, the new season. Of Stranger oh, Stranger no. He's supposed to be kind of that, but that's not oh, who that's I am. I then remember then, that like Manny and, and, and Lenny were supposed to like hate each other. Yeah. Or was, not he, like Lenny was supposed to hate Manny. Manny thought Lenny was great. He wasn't going to be like a bully or anything, but he was supposed to be like that kind of guy. And then it just, the show started and that's just not what I play. That's just not what I did. I don't know why it was different, but it, I just think because I didn't want to be an asshole. So it was like, what if that person is empathetic or, or you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, um, I came in last, but um, I, I knew I wanted to be connected to a Nazi. Uh, I mean, I had other choices, but I picked the divinity before I picked who the character was going to be. Um, and that also informed me who I was going to play because I kind of wanted a, not necessarily a foreign exchange student aspect, but someone who wasn't completely with the group, who could like literally have to join the group. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I, I did. I I'm surprised you all picked gods and then kids because I watching how you all played. I could have sworn it was like you had a fully get like, our 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 pick our gods first when we. I were... asked you guys to pick out a trope and a god, if yeah. I recall correctly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because Dahlia, if I look back on her character sheet, there's, like, the description and then, like, a flaw or, like, a vice. That's I can't remember the exact term for it. But her vice was that she could never say no to anyone because she mm. was supposed to be sort of like a pushover, kind of meek little flower girl. And that is not Dahlia. Dahlia makes her mind and then goes with it and doesn't care what anyone says. Manny's vice was that they were a complete, they were a total enabler. They would enable anyone to do whatever. Oh God, <laughs> and I think I managed that. to nail it. Yeah. Yep. You killed yep. it. Did that a lot. Yeah, my character sheet said that he was a party guy who wanted to be in politics. And then it was immediately like, oh, his dad wants him to be in politics. And then, and then it was like, okay, well, but I mean, that stayed on the sheet the entire time. And then eventually, like, <laughs> I recontextualized that and like, he wants to be able to actually help people, you know? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really do like the flaws and vices and all that. Cause again, I came in as a guest character and he just happened to become a main cast. Guest fail. Uh, guest fail. But um, I knew that they were a silver tongue. I knew they could talk their way out of anything. And originally it was selfish, and then it very much became not selfish at all. <laughs> like, at all, uh, for very deep reasons. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of how that happened. Uh, on that note, uh, let's go ahead. And... So, Omega, I... I fell in love with Kwame as soon as we were done with that one shot. Like, I was like, that was great. He fits so well. And uh, 
I don't Kelly, know if, I, if we've told you this, but like we had you on and we knew we were going to have an open slot. Oh. And then immediately like you like got off the call and we we're like, so it's going to be, it's going to be CB, I, CB, right? I, I, he, he, he can do it. And then <laughs> you, you emailed <laughs> me first and said, Hey, if there's ever a chance for me to be on the show. And I was like, absolutely. How about next Sunday? I <laughs> almost <laughs> threw a, a chair. You have no idea because Kelly Nugent in the, in a meeting with Steven and Dom talking about it when you emailed me, hey, could I, I would love to be on the show. More. Yes, that, that literally happened because- Wow. We maybe love you just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I had never, so I never played with you before the one shot, but mm -hmm. you know, it's, I love having, you know, an, I love having someone else who's queer at the table, obviously. Hey, Aki, how you doing? Um, so it was just like, hey, this is great. We're I like awesome. it. You, you, this table is mostly queer. I don't know if it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's only one outlier. That flag. <laughs> I like that you also use the word mostly to say yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're mostly yeah. queer. Um, when you, you did that one shot and I let you have that one power that I regret. I regret that. I regret saying yes. But for a one shot, yeah. I thought it was fine. Then the whole camp, then I had to figure out for the rest of the campaign. And I can't express how much I grew to really become invested in Kwame and his story. And I'll be honest, originally I planned on having his mom come back from the dead. Mm. That was the original plan. And his goodbye speech, his like, moment of no i'm an adult and i have to do this really hard thing i have to say goodbye i was i, I was like i can't do that <laughs> i can't yeah. take, i can't negate that because that was so powerful like it really like i don't know about y'all but i got i was like fuck i'm i'm gonna try really hard not to cry right now so there's definitely a level of reality when it comes because I have a, I mean, my mother's not dead, but I have like a very rocky relationship with my mother. So like a eventual conversation I'm probably going to have to have with my mother was very similar to what Kwame did have with his mother. Uh, but um, with Kwame, and just to kind of talk about something you touched on, uh, I knew what I was doing when I asked for that ability. Uh, for those who don't realize, the reason I wanted that abil ability to begin with it's because I love Umbrella Academy. And Allison Hargreaves' ability is to manipulate reality by speaking a certain phrase, saying, you know, I heard a rumor, and then that rumor becomes true. And I, I was like, if I'm going to be connected to Anansi, who's the literal god of all stories, if they spin the web to and, and write something new, it happens, because they are the storyteller. So I wanted that aspect of being able to, you know, manipulate it to a, an extent but I also knew that there had to be a reason that the extent was even there, like that 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 limit was there. Uh, and I knew that I don't always have like these tragic backstories because uh, sometimes I think they're played out. Uh, but I was like, there has to be a reason he has this power that's arguably the most powerful power in this group, but doesn't use it to his full extent because he accidentally killed his mom with it. Um, and he couldn't, he could never go back to that moment, uh, or go back to that level because, you know, it also goes into, uh, I love once upon a time, you know, um, uh, magic comes to the price, you know, you know, there's a level of, if you do a thing, there's going to be an effect that comes out of it. Actions have consequences, cause and effect. Um, so it was fun playing this character who at first glance seemed like they could talk their way out of any situation, but they just kind of always knew how to get by. Uh, and then you realize why he was getting by because he was always influencing the moment to make sure he did. Um, but then you realize that he was always protecting himself versus making it better for himself. There was always a level, I'm not doing it to be selfish, I'm doing it because it's necessary. Um, and um, yeah, it, it, then it gets grew from there. Um, I didn't expect him to become as, I don't know, 
deeply in, invested in people as he became. I mean, he fell in love with somebody. Right. Which I did not expect. I mean, it started off as a joke. Yeah. 1,000% started off as a gay skew. And he was like, oh, I just said that out loud. I mean, oh. that's that's improv storytelling. <laughs> you, can't, yeah. you can't help it. The longer you stay in it, the more you got to make it real. <laughs> it's real. Um, and I, I, mean, I, I always joke to myself that Kawame Spiro and Lenny were just like this trio of hot guys who kind of just like, if they really wanted to run the school, they could just because they were that hot. Yeah. Uh, but like, that was never the dynamic. They were just these goofballs. <laughs> they just don't care time. enough to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and I, like I said, I originally wrote Kwame to kind of have this cool cat vibe. He was a poet. Yeah. Did poetry ever come back? No. Um. <laughs> I always, and I felt, I, I, I feel like I kind of failed the character in that regard because he wishes away. I remember he manipulated reality to become the basketball captain in order to win the prom arc. And I always felt bad that we didn't go back and like try to fix that. I was, I never wanted it to be fixed. Really? That's not the purpose of his power. True. Uh, his power isn't to do something and then go back like it never happened. If he has to rewrite the story, he has to live with the consequences of that rewrite. Yeah, and I think so I, you played that well. Like, like, like you were saying with his, like the first time, you know, with his mother, it's like, oh gosh, what have I done? But then when you're like, I remember you like Kwame making the decision to like, it's like, I got to be prom queen. He's like, I got to give up this, these things. Like it, if we're going to save the world, I have to give up things. Mm -hmm. And that was actually the, the first step of me realizing how much he actually cared about, I mean, like, no, the, the running gag was, no, I'm not a part of the safety squad. Uh, and he always knew he was. But he would just never say it out loud because being the person who literally has the ability to speak these into existence, he would never say he was part of the safety squad until he finally did say it. Um, so um, yeah, that was that was a level of that was a a, a turning point in who Kawame was meant to be, um, and yeah, and I I I I don't know completely where his story goes after this. I do, without being super uh, like romantic, he is 1000% going to support Lenny in everything that he does. Um, like, I know that for a fact. He'll drop, like, he'll, he'll do something. If Lenny acts to come, he'll like immediately just teleport there. Like, what's up? <laughs> like, I, I know that because that's just the person he is now. Um, yeah. And, 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 I I was also kind of playing that up into the way combat started to happen. He used to stay in the back and just, you know, let me just like hold this person off over here or let me close this door. Like he was really like protecting the group of protecting the world from seeing. And then he at the end, the he, he, yeah, he, he started like knocking a few bucks uh, because he, that, he became super protective. Um, I, was I, gonna, I was just going to make a comment really fast. Uh, uh, CB. I think everybody here at the table did a really good job of it, but I don't think there was anybody who excelled at it quite to the level that you did of like having a character that was really capable of sitting with the discomfort of a situation and like of the decisions that they made and the consequences that they had to deal with because of those decisions. Like, I don't feel like, I feel like you, uh, Kwame specifically was like super, a super beautiful example of that at the table. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I I knew that I, I when I create characters or when I think about like character stories, there's always a through line. Um, and his through line was if you could change, like, I mean, you know, it's the Merida line. If you could change your fate, would you? Uh, but it's also the idea of change are you fate. ready to? <laughs> would you? Can't break it. Uh, I'm shooting for my own hand. <laughs> Turn my mom into a bear. Sorry, go ahead, CB. <laughs> I we lost the plot. The Bears came in. Out right there. You, it's your fault. You did this, Omega. I, tr I tried to help hold it in, but Mika, Mika broke the dam on that one. 
I was also <laughs> thinking it though. That's what was so sad is the moment he said it, I was just like, if you can change your feet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's funny. I always felt like Kwame was the mag to Lenny's Hercules. Interesting. Yeah. I will say I'm in love. And Aki and Dahlia were the muses. Oh, absolutely. Oh, 1,000%. Manny and, that, Manny and Dahlia make wonderful muses. Listen, oh, yeah. one Manny, of them, I used Aki. It's good. You go, Kale. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, um, right. singer. Two weeks ago on Kolak, full ass just said Abria instead of Laura. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone at the table kept going, yeah, Laura. And I was like, why are we all saying Laura's name? Oh, then, no. <laughs> uh, I, I've said it once, but I, I do have to say it again. Having a scene partner like Eric was, was special because yep. that ice cream parlor scene is oh. still one of my all time favorite scenes. It was just even like the 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 peanut gallery, <laughs> like being messy uh, in their booth, like the entire sequence was just I, I felt like I was watching like Riverdale meets I don't know, like I, I don't know. That was the, it was just a good moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Avery Adler, who I, ju I just finished reading Monster Hearts again. Leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> she talks about the perfect moments in like games and movies. And to me, the ice cream scene was kind of a perfect moment. It was because you guys just found out something really heavy. Like once the scarecrows are gone, there's a really big chance you might not make it. And it was the most teenager reaction of just like, Fine, fuck you. I don't care. I don't want your help. I'm going to go hang out with my friends. We're going to go do something stupid. And I loved it. And it resulted in that confession, which was... We're about to do something really ridiculous. I just love Lenny being like, yeah, you're kind of being a punk right now. Like, say what you got to say. And it's like, well, fuck. Well? I'm pump. I've been spotted. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Good vibes. Good vibes. I I will say, CB, you managed to play because Kwame was cool. Kwame's cool, but you were totally able to just like drop into dork as soon as Lenny became like a factor, and it was so cute. That's I mean, that's when I re go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say like that was the interesting thing about that dynamic is because I'm a huge dork, but I was like Lenny's not. Lenny, Lenny, Lenny will just say it. Like Lenny has no problem asking people out or saying he's like he's like if you want this to be a thing, then let's make it a thing. But if not, okay, you know, Lenny doesn't give a shit crap. And, and in the same vein, I'm I am one thousand percent not a dork at all. And Kawame portrays himself as not to be a dork very well because he can do that for himself. The minute I realized how shy and and bashful he was getting. It's when I realized it was real. Like it was, no, it was no longer a joke. I was like, "Oh, oh, he cares." Or, or nor Cleor, the condensation. Or nor. Or, or, <laughs> or nor. Oh, no. <laughs> or, or, yeah. Yeah. So, I want to. I could talk about uh, what did we end up calling the ship, Quenny. Quenny. Yeah, I can talk about Quinny for. We have to talk about Nanansi a little bit because oh. Nanansi, I think, was very easily like, aside from Morpheus and and maybe Loki, was the most well, like the most uh, present NPC that we had, and like the relationship that you two built with each other through like your portrayals of Kwame and Nanansi was really interesting, and I want to hear like like about that. <laughs> I, I can't speak for CB, but I can say I knew I found the character of Anansi when uh, Kwame was like, this was going on and you didn't tell me. And the only thing I could think of was, you didn't ask. You didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is him. This is this is what Anansi, this is Anansi. He is just like, you didn't ask. <laughs> but, and I want to I want to applaud you um, because I mean, Anansi is a West African character um, and you did not, you know, put on a voice that was, you know, 
appropriative. Um, you didn't try to make him be this, you know, you could easily like you, we play Greeks so normal and we even play like Norse a little normal with like a, a, a dwarvish inflection. But mm -hmm. when we get to any other mythology, we just go like super exotic. I was like, just play them normally. <laughs> that's kind of my thing. Like, I've learned this from having Aki at my table for so long. Like, the way people treat Black characters is really gross, in my opinion. Because they always, like, especially, especially when it comes to Black mythology, there's always, like, this, like, otherness or, like, this bizarre, like, no, it's primal. Like, no their mythological figures they're just stories if, written by people just like all the other mythology <laughs> if i'm going to have mm -hmm. persephone call hades a simp i think it's totally cool for a nazi to kind of just be a he's a trickster he's a bit bugs bunny he's a he character. was Bugs Bunny. Holy I Jesus! Did, I did. I absolutely, I absolutely played him as Bugs Bunny. <laughs> he was an Acme character all day, and and that's something I just really appreciated because, uh, I mean, something I, I always tie in is like, yeah, he's a he's a he's a god of stories, but he is one of the original tricksters, which is why you know Kwame didn't fuck with Loki. Um, but I, mean, I really, <laughs> I really enjoyed their dynamic, and it just became so playful. Um, it became like a level of like Kawame 1000% like listens to Anansi, but also treats Anansi like a big brother <laughs> in the same vein. Um, I don't know. It was, there was a, there was a lot of respect between them and I just really enjoyed just how it came across and the fucking costume changes. <laughs> the costume changes were very fun. <laughs> um, mostly because deep down, I just want to wear tearaway clothes all the time with a costume underneath. Like every day, um, but yeah, it was really important to me just kind of play Anansi, one as a trickster, two as a storyteller, and three kind. Anansi is one of those characters in mythology that has a lot of personality. Uh, mm -hmm. Whenever he shows up in anything, it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a big story, so it made sense for me to play him a bit more talkative than I played some of the other uh divinities um also eric kept picking picking divinities that i hadn't heard of and only had one google sh google article about them so that was mm -hmm. a little hard very little information about all my deities progressively less each time i pick one <laughs> but I, I want to turn this into a let's focus on aki for a moment that's what i would like to do as well why i absolutely love my aunt and 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 Manny's relationship. You mentioned that you know Maat being so cerebral and Manny not being. I love that there was a level of yeah, you use your power to like reveal the truth or whatever. But there was a level of like utter like guidance that was just I don't know. It was just a, a cool a cool way to portray your connection where like they were like almost literally your brain and the and and they process the way they. They they spoke with almost many processing at the same time. Yeah, it was cool. Um, I really appreciated kind of the um, like a surrogate mother sort of vibe that was there without being like coddling or like um, uh, Maat Maat helped Manny learn how to think for themselves um and but by the same token was also always there when manny didn't have the capacity and it but it never felt like it never felt condescending and it never felt like pandering and it never felt like hand holding it always felt like like a very gentle like i'm just gonna push you in that direction and off you go have at it <laughs> Um, now, Aki, this is our second campaign together. Uh, am I right? Counting the yes. first New Pantheon and this? Yeah. I loved everything about how you played Manny and just this little source of 
positivity that will still shank you. Like they were, they brought so much happiness and joy. And I liked that they were everyone's cheerleader and eventually their own cheerleader, really. But you always played them with just enough bite that they came off like, yeah, you don't want to fuck with uh, Manny. Emancipation Brown knows what they're about. They might be kind of ditzy, but they're not incapable. Very paladin energy. Like, like, listen, I don't hurt energy. you, but if I do hurt you, it's technically a good thing. I think that Manny is probably of any character I've put on a piece of paper the most like what I expected them to be. Like, it's not a common thing for somebody for, for to, to play a character that, like, you have the impression that they're going to be like this, and then the moment you play them, it's like, ah, not quite. Um, I've had, like, that's usually, you know, the case for most of us when we when we, we start. Like, Manny, I think, was is possibly the first time I've ever, like, had an idea for a character, and that idea actually fit in perfectly with what the table needed. And I was able to kind of, like, stick with it if that makes sense so like absolutely um and that doesn't happen very often and i think that's how i knew that like i struck kind of like the perfect balance on on them as a character because they had they had somewhere to go like they had a progression to make and a story that they could tell but it it, it felt like i finally it felt like i started them in exactly the right place which gave them like uh uh, a spot a spot in the group that that and and their friendship with with dahlia like oh. I, I don't think I, I can't even begin to express how much that that relationship came to mean to me like out like outside of the game like just getting to see like a super healthy friendship develop between two characters that like maybe to the audiences I would be kind of femme coded like um I always kind of saw Manny as kind of more mask but like what other people's perception of what of them was I have no idea um but I just and and because they had very similar energies coming from very different places the fact that they didn't become because it it could have been so easy for us to play the trope of we're so alike that we can't stand each other kind yeah. of thing and the fact that that didn't happen i think made it so special and like uh -huh. like and that i i just uh, yeah dahlia I, and, and one and of my Manny's favorite things so is happy. the very first episode we both had the same voice yeah <laughs> you and me had the same voice. wow Manny and dahlia both had like the up high kind of energetic voice mm -hmm. and after that episode we both were like oh <laughs> We probably need to fix this a little bit. But it wasn't. But it what wasn't gonna like. Have to change? Well, the, no, the thing is, is like the the differences were very subtle. Like, yeah, like, yeah. They, like, and I don't even know that we like specifically even acknowledged it. It might have just been on both of our minds, and yeah. like the tweaks just kind of happened without yeah. anything needing to be said. And I think they found very distinctive voices while still holding some of the same energy from that first that first episode. Yeah. I feel like that energy also really helped me shape what like who Lenny was like because because as soon as Dahlia and Manny are friends and talking and I'm like my character has to also be friends with them so what kind of person is this are they going to be friends with if I'm like uh, screw the you know I'm if I'm like you know local jock bully guy like he's he's not a part of this team no was I got with that no, I, I think that that I think that for me, a lot of who Manny ended up being um, as a person was really defined by the relationships that they created with the other people. Like, I, I, I feel like that's sort of where Manny kind of was a little bit different, I guess, than what I anticipated, because like um, I've played I've like there's a specific kind of character that I'm pretty well known for playing. I don't feel like Manny fell into that mold quite as, as much as other characters I've played in the past. Um, 
I think that like Manny surprised me because I believe that in, by the end of the show, Manny was 100% a product of the friendships that they had created with the rest of the table as opposed to the the influence that they had exerted on other people, if that makes sense. It's like, I have always kind of gotten to the end of a campaign and be like, what what did my character do that affected other people? And in, in, in the case of Manny, it was who has Manny become because of the people that have been in their life? Um, and that was a really interesting place to come to uh, at the end of Manny's character arc, because as somebody who never even imagined being in a position of leadership, had no like sense that that was even something that they were really capable of because they'd always kind of played this word. And I think that was the other thing is them realizing that leadership comes from a place of service. Like the best type of leaders uh, like are servants to the people who need like, like servants to others. Like it is better to lead from a place of service than it is to like, aim for leadership. Um, and so I, I think that's kind of, that became kind of the strength of who they were as a character. Um, even though they were up in the front of, of the, and they had the, the sword and the shield and stuff like that, it, it wasn't about being, you know, the healer or the, the hero or like anything like that. That wasn't where any of that came from. I think my favorite moment with Manny was when they stood up to their parents because they seemed to have a good relationship with their parents. Like it wasn't, you know, Lenny and his dad or anything. Uh, but just that like strength they have of like, I don't need protection. I can take care of myself and others. Like that was a huge like that really stuck with me as a GM, just kind of like, God damn. Yeah. Um, got I, I created Manny to be kind of um, a character, like their parents sent them to this school because they were struggling in regular schools because of like their, because of their learning. Like I, I, I developed Manny to have something, uh, they did have a learning disability. Um, they were they were not capable of of learning the same way that other people were, um, and so they were sent to a private school so that they have a little bit more hands on attention. Um, and so their parents were very much helicopter parents, very hovery, um, very concerned about like um, you know their ability to socialize and like you know uh, thrive in 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 a in a um, student environment. Um, so it was a really interesting thing to, to like actually find the the space inside them to be like, no, I'm I got this. I know y'all are worried, but I, I I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> I got this. Yeah, there, there was kind of a recurring motif of kind of like growing up and just really in this in this 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 anime inspired Shut RPG up. set in the high school. Is coming Shut of up. age is a big part Shut of up. it. I don't. Boo. Yes. Yes. No. I I always expected that, but it was very strong, to put it mildly. Just watching all four of your characters go from, like, you know, sort of the, you know, what a teenager wants to be, what a teenager is, into adulthood, really, by the end of it. Like, you took out the ultimate bad father because that is what i was playing uh ari scratch as he was just like this disney dad gone horribly awry and you were like fuck you okay you offer nothing and all four of you just getting together like that was like i can't think of we just bullied the devil until he gave up yeah, yeah i yeah. can't believe we literally bullied the devil until he just quit <laughs> I mean, that's what we do to every shitty fight. adult in this okay. game. Is we just bully the devil was ready for a physical fight, but we were like, "No, nah, we're kids. We're gonna verbally beat you down." No, it's our strongest superpower throughout the entire series has been our ability to be teens criticizing adults. Teenagers scared the shit out of me. 
<laughs> the only the only adult worthy of our time was Gladys. So uh, we actually have a question submitted by Five Foot Latina. Uh, how did our beloved Gladys come to be? And I'm just gonna let uh, Eric answer this one because there's nothing like I had nothing to do with this character. Yeah, I'll tell you exactly how it came. We were talking about like ways we wanted to add some more interaction with the show. Uh, and we've had other shows that do like like you know, like things where people can like send messages and we're like, what's a what's a fun in universe way to do that? And it was like uh school announcements. And then uh, you know, Steven's like, I'm doing a thousand things. I don't know. I was like, I'll I'll just do it then. I'll just do it. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be me because I'm already in this. So I got to be somebody very different. So I just did this voice. And then we just kept doing it. And then like everything, the more you do something, the more you got to innovate and iterate on it. And then it became a whole thing. Gladys was amazing. People love fell it. in love with Gladys in a way that I just what did not expect. Like she really became sort of fully fleshed out in her own right. It was oh, very- 1,000%. She definitely became a fully fleshed character. Like, yep, from, from, ah! like, yeah, like she, she had her own ideas and bonds and flaws and what she wanted. And then she had her divinity and just, yeah, Gladys dead ass was just the MVP. <laughs> I do um, want to quickly, uh, just oh. really quickly before we go go on too far, uh, I just wanted to comment because uh, obviously Aki uh, Manny's power was to reveal the truth and 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 everything, literally sucking the air out of people, which is just horrifying. Um, Absolutely but horrifying. I loved it. I I think Manny's superpower was the ability to ask the right question. I um, agree. Yeah. Yeah. I all I literally I, every episode, Manny asks the question that makes us go, "Oh, oh, yeah!" Like, and and I think that was a cool way of like, you know, realizing that Manny doesn't have to depend on their surrogate deified mother. Uh, in the sense, like there was but also always, that like, there's Manny, a different way to be smart. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, it's yeah, I, I, I always enjoy like, like whenever many started like really speaking and like going into detail and explaining things and acting those things, I always tuned in because I'm like, there's something we're, we're about to, oh, we about to, we about to get it, y'all. We're about to get it, y'all. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say that real quick. That was my, oh, one of my favorite you. things about Manny. Manny to me proved that wisdom. There's a reason wisdom and intelligence are separate stats. Yeah, Dragon. yeah. Because Manny yeah, I think, is incredibly I think that's... wise, even if they probably were a C student. Yeah, no, this is the thing. Is I, I think that that was it for me. I wanted, I wanted to play a character who saw the world in a way that was so, like, I guess, innocent and simple that, like, them talking their way through it was kind of how they processed the way they saw the world. And that was what kind of made the questions happen the way that they did. It was always them just kind of trying to reconcile like what they were seeing with how they understood and perceived the world. Yeah. And there's the like innate curiosity that Manny had for not only other people, but for the people they, just the world around them, really makes a wonderful character to have at your table and just kind of a wonderful person to play with. Yeah. No, I, I loved playing them. They made me really happy. It's that paladin energy, that like strong moral compass that like doesn't always um, point the exact same way that everyone else is, but is, but, but you understand it. Yep. Mm-hmm. So Manny was 100% my oh, favorite okay. character in oh. the entire group. Anytime I had a scene with Manny, I, uh. you guys don't like, I, I, it legitimately made me happy to sing, do scenes with each and every one of you. It was such a joy always like this, this has to be like probably one of the most wholesome tables I've ever sat at. Um, it was, it was, yeah, it was just very, very lovely. Well, so we've talked about the four of us. Steven, who was your favorite NPC to play? Oh, Pick your favorite uh, child. Oh, without question, uh, 
honestly, okay. I can't decide between Kim and Nanako. I am going to say Nanako, okay. though, because oh. Nanako, to me, was... I made Nanako to have... So, Kelly Nugent, who, you know, love her to death. She had to step away after season one. I had Nanako because I needed someone who would reach out for their character. Because... Uh, CB, you didn't get to meet uh, her character, but it, she played. I the... did. Oh, you did. Yeah. You did. That's right. You did. <laughs> you did. Yes. Uh, just this uh, agoraphobic, shut in mm -hmm. uh, hypochondriac. I wanted someone who would want that. And as I played Nanako more, I really sort of fell in love with her and developed her a bit because. She was someone who was scared of taking up space. Mm. And she had to learn to like, no, it's okay if I do that. I can be. Can't really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. It's like, I'm worthy of loving myself and I'm worthy of kind of understanding that. I don't have to be limited by what scares me. So yeah. Nanako became a really like precious character to me. Uh, she was also named after uh, two big inspirations for this game, which was Persona 4 and the Yakuza series. Uh, she got her surname from one of the antagonists in one and a uh, character who dies in the other. I'm not going to tell you which one switch. Uh, Kim, however, was a surprise because... As uh, Aki and Eric know, I love me a mean lesbian. <laughs> I love playing a mean lesbian, especially a mean lesbian who's like deep down, like genuinely loves you. They're just kind of a big jerk. <laughs> so mm -hmm. and, it's just they, were and, taught, they were just never taught how to express their emotions in a healthy way. No, absolutely not. Kim, a thousand percent just... I would love to see what Kim would grow up to be because they are undoubtedly. I mean, she amazing. is one hundred percent going to become a teacher. Oh, absolutely! Like that is destined. <laughs> she's going to be a teacher, and then she's probably going to take over uh, North Point Academy because that's uh, that's her dad. Yeah, I feel like of all of us in season four, she was the most upset by being in that world because it was the truest thing she'd ever wanted and never wanted anyone to know. Mm -hmm. it, it was also getting those 10 years back because, you know, she had been dead for 10 years. You know, she, mm -hmm. had, she only had a funeral. She only had a headstone and a funeral and all that stuff because of Dr. Ash. So to wake up and she gets those 10 years back, but she loses uh, Dr. Ash like that destroyed her. And, yeah, she was definitely a very complex character and one I loved playing, but Nanako just meant a lot to me, like, personally, you know? Uh, Nanako Bot 5000. Nanako Bot 5000 was also... Uh, bad girl therapy. Uh, that's also based on a true story, because I have been uh, Nanako Bot 5000 before, where it's just like, <laughs> nope, hello, hi, I lost my ability to blink, Hello. Beep boop. <laughs> Beep boop. Beep boop. Uh, we got a question from Mel Pamino and a comment. Uh, Mel Pamino asks, similar to Spiro slash Dahlia, did Kwame Lenny stay together end game? And this is a loaded question. What would their child be slash would their child have a divinity? And also they want to uh, tell Eric that they appreciate the efforts for the Welsh Language Society. It was horribly wrong each time, but they appreciated it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I love Wales. I've been to Wales. I not. I, I only spent like 24 hours in Wales, but it's a beautiful country. I thought you were talking about the there. animal. <laughs> Wales! <laughs> I did for a um, second, too. I was like... <laughs> for a second, I was like, how would they have a kid that has a divinity, but Kwame could just write the story also that they divinity is not genetic yeah, they could also i know but I, you know but he can right. also just will the child into being he can will the child to be genetically kwame and lenny so, yeah i 
Oh. I can't see them having kids. I could. I could see that. No. If I they think... did, they would be an only child. No, actually, they wouldn't have only. If they did have kids, they'd have more than one because they were both only children. Mm -hmm. Or they became only children. Yeah, I think I think Lenny would insist on if they were going to have children, like adopting ch children rather than making them up out of thin air. Yeah, I'm like I I cannot see Kawame using his power to influence a child because he does not know what the consequence of that would be. I do. I played that, that in, like... in Monster Hearts. That's that was my character in Monster Mahalo. Hearts. Uh, yeah, a, a, a child <laughs> who was wished into existence by his parents. Oh geez, I mean, it doesn't end well. For, well, and for Kawame, something I didn't get into a lot um, is that because I have a, I mean, if you're religious, especially sort of like Christian, you know, more power to you. I'm not like coming for anybody who's Christian in any way, shape, or form. But like, I just have an inherent like uh, when it comes to the Judeo-Christian, because you are not the only one to exist. Uh, and a lot of mythologies and, and, and gods existed way before Jesus Christ did. Um, and a lot of mythologies are even referenced in the Bible. So, go okay. off. But, <laughs> but with that being said, um, I knew that there was a level of tradition, African tradition with Kwame's father, but Christianity with his mother, which is why I chose Abaddon for his second divinity, oh. it was tying it to his mother. That's smart. I didn't. I did not realize that. I love that. I, I never got into it a lot. Um, so, with that being said, so yeah, there is a level of, and I've mentioned that he's read the Bible a lot, and I've written, I mentioned it because, and, and it, he, you know, he went to church and did all these things next Y and Z. Uh, but um, excuse me. Um, if he were to ever wish a child to exist, is he going straight to Antichrist? And he's just like, nope, not doing that. <laughs> not doing that at all. Uh, so yeah, I, I think adoption 1000%. Um, uh, and to answer the question, I mean, I'm not gonna speak for Eric. I, I see them as in-game. Um, I mean, I see them as in-game unless the story goes other, another way. Um, I, I would agree, because I'm, because, especially because Lenny is now psychic and, and their relationship lives so much more internally. I imagine a lot more of that would happen as you grow. Like the, the, the idea of psychics in a relationship is always fascinating to me. Cause like when you can truly understand a person, mm -hmm. if you still choose to be with them, then the, that's a person you should stay with. Oh. And I will say, I, I can confidently say Kawame was the first to say, I love you. Um, and he would even be like, oh my God, they are Scarlet Witch and Vision. I actually hate that. Um, but, um, um, and he would say, you know, you can look and see that. And he would, Lenny would 1000%. I think, yeah, Lenny would, love. Lenny would have like, like read it and waited for it to be said to return it. <laughs> Oh, that's deep. That's um, that's very, very that's Lenny. Deep. That's deep. I love that. Um, then you know, bet notches. I'm the I'm the strength. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> We're a safe for work stream, everyone. I promise you. But <laughs> hey, I, I... bet notches. I don't say where they came from. I have a question because this is a question I think we've asked before earlier, uh, but now that we've gotten to the end, a question I want to ask again. Um, we all have the option once we graduate from high school of keeping or giving up our divinities, and oh, I yeah. want to know who would have kept theirs and who would have let theirs go. Um, because I know that we all had an answer a couple of seasons ago. But I'm curious as to what the answer would be now. I think Lenny would have given it up. I think he would have, he would have, because he still got, you know, his psychic powers or whatever from uh, from Loki that's not tied to his divinity. I think he would, he wouldn't have just been like, well, high school's over, give it up. I think he would have found someone deserving or like helped, Ninka or like when Ninkasi found someone deserving, would have gladly given it up because I think he would have, he, he he would know eventually someone would have to 
somebody has to stand guard and do what he was doing anyways. I think Dolly would have kept hers. Yeah, really. Both They're of them? her besties. <laughs> um, okay, I'll say it like this. He would have kept Abaddon because of this connection to his mom. He wouldn't have used Abaddon often, and Abaddon actually would have manifested into a necklace, uh, an a, a obsidian necklace that he keeps around his neck. We um, like being and- pretty. Yeah, um, and and I and I I don't think he ever used his uh, embodiment of the void power again, unless he had really needed to. Like you know, somebody trying to be homophobic in twenty twenty two. No, yeah, you're gonna get sent to the afterlife um, through my portal. To the shadow realm. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I I think I think he kept that. He couldn't give up a Nancy even if he tried. But I don't think a Nancy how do I phrase this? He gave up a Nancy, but a Nancy's still there. I don't yeah, um, I, I don't I don't I don't think a Nancy's going away. Yeah, a Nancy joined the family. <laughs> yes. I'm not to join the family. <laughs> I, I do like the idea that uh, like Kwame would give up the divinity of Anansi, like, okay, let someone else have that power eventually. But Anansi just just like shows up. You open up the fridge, there he is, you know. Uh your fruit salad's gone bad. <laughs> yeah, I think Anansi is just this weird gremlin that lives with Lenny and Kwame. <laughs> He is the drop in uncle. Yeah. And he would but and, and 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 once, you know, if, if a kid is adopted, he's the one watching the kid. Like, end of story. Yeah. Like it's yeah, it's just yeah. I don't yeah. He gave up the power and I don't think Anansi gave his power to someone else. But I just think Anansi's like, yeah, I'm still around. You know, I, yeah. Make sure you put more Capri Sun in the refrigerator thing. Yeah. I, I, I like to imagine that, like, if they have a child, like, one of those child children is, like, the one who, like, Anansi is always telling stories to and then eventually takes up the mantle. Aww. Yeah, I, 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 I can see, see that. that. I can see that. Yeah. I like that. Um, yeah, I think I, Dolly's definitely keeping her divinities. I think on the Persephone side, it's because Spiro's also keeping Hades, and they kind of just want to keep them together. Because, like, why not? They get all year together if they're in us. That Um, makes sense. That's deep. Instead of having to, like, split up every six months. And then uh, Brigid, I feel like Brigid's just part of the family, too. And then at some point when they retire, they do one of those little, like, uh, senior dog resorts where they just have a bunch of senior animals on a farm and that's like Brigid's whole thing where she's like Brigid you've been on the back burner for so long help me with these senior dogs <laughs> in retirement that's that's adorable uh, what about Manny you... uh, Manny would have spent their senior year scoping out the underclassmen um and would it, like probably right before they graduated from high school, they would have like they were probably school president by this point. They probably called this kid into like the the student council you know room and like sat them down and had a conversation with them. And like even before they'd left the school, they they probably turned to Maat and Quetzalcoatl over to that student and helped train them. And that that student was probably helping the rest of the safety squad for the last couple of months of school while Manny was just preparing to be a normal person again. Wow. I like that for them. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, One last thing. I do feel obligated, like Morpheus I would talk about, but what's there to say about Morpheus? He was a bunny. He liked being a bunny. He's... uh, People are gonna wonder why Spiro's agent always has a rabbit with them, but other and why the rabbit doesn't seem to die. But don't worry about it. Um, 
Loki was a character that you, Aki, made me keep. Now, you didn't make me. You didn't ask me to. But your relationship with them, this whole, like, no, I see through your bullshit. Like, I loved Loki. I like. I, I would not consider myself like necessarily a Loki stan. Like in real life, like I don't obsess over Loki the way a lot of other people obsess over Loki. But I decided that Nanny was one hundred percent like, like, a, a, somebody who one hundred percent sees through trickster bullshit. And it's just like ah, I'm not buying any of this. We're friends now. Which I love because like Lenny's whole thing with Loki, like it, it wasn't super present, but it's like. You can't trust this person, therefore you can't you can't open to this person. Like, no, no, this person's a liar and a manipulator. No, thank you. <laughs> like, Dahlia, Lenny, and Kwame were all just like, no, fuck no, get no, no. We got a trickster. We don't need another. Fuck off. No. But Manny's relationship with them was like enough to make them go like, okay, have powers. That's what you like, right? I, I don't. I understand. don't think that Dahlia was like, no, not another trickster. Dahlia's whole thing with Loki was he was trying to be a bunny when she had lost her bunny. No. And so mm. she was like, you can't come in and pretend to be the bunny of the group because we're still looking for Orpheus or Morpheus. So take a back. Bud. Yeah, and I, I and. I mean, I think honestly, I mean, I'm not going to speak for Eric, but I think honestly, Kwame was the only one who was like, no, we haven't, because he literally had a non scene. He was like, I already know your kind, and I know you're stuck up. You're not as cool as you think. You're not as, you're not the best, like you probably think you are. Like, he's older than you. That's really what it came down to. It was like, I don't like because you don't, risk, so, no, you stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think Lenny was just like, he, he didn't trust them, but as soon as it was like, well, they're my friend's friend, so I have to, like, you know. <laughs> I still think my favorite Loki moment was Lenny tackling them with the sunburn. Because <laughs> that is just so, I guess, pure is the word. Just this very teenage moment of like, oh, yeah, no, he's in excruciating pain. Let me make it worse. When Manny becomes president, Loki is their their inauguration. They voted for him twice. I have a question. Okay. Did anyone think that character was going to die? I think I was the only character to not even come close to it. Interestingly enough, despite yeah, being I, uh, all up in, all up in the front lines, I don't think I, I threw even it out think. health points a couple times. Yeah, I only remember one or two cases where it was like, "Uh oh, this could be dangerous." But I, I never felt like my character was in danger. What I thought could happen, especially when we started getting into like dream realm stuff, I thought that at some point Lenny might be presented with an opportunity to take his brother's place. And I was like, I don't know what decision I would make at that point. Like, like, uh, yeah. So I thought there was there was a chance if that if that specific situation came up, that's when he would have been in true danger, probably. Am I remembering that correctly? I feel like I feel like Manny didn't really get that close to dying. Manny had their moments. Manny had a couple moments of getting pretty low. Uh, Kwame, oh, because low, Kwame, but I don't even know. I can't even remember if they ever went unconscious. I might not. I might be. I don't, think I, don't, I don't. I don't think Manny ever went unconscious. I don't no, think so Manny was the only one to not be unconscious at one point. I think I no. I went unconscious twice. One of them was when I was kicked out of a window. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Not sorry about yeah. that. It was awesome. Kwame got gored by the 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 crow. In the um, in the cafeteria or the library, I forgot which one they were. In season yes. two, yeah, three, yeah. two, two or three. Remember. And then so, I think I, I think he went down to zero. No, I think that was the only time he went to zero. He he went down to two. He was almost like effed, but he never he didn't die die. 
I I did joke about right before the finale of uh, the possibility of Manny sacrificing himself and Steven getting very upset about the idea. I don't <laughs> like bummer campaign endings. I will say this. I did have the thought um, because we all knew that the devil fight was going to be hard. Mm. Um, I had the thought of Kwame potentially rewriting the story that he took the place of whoever got knocked out um, to make sure that they were safe. Like he was willing to switch it, that it never happened to them. Um, and I actually remember when um, Dr. Ash got that, that spear through them, I was expecting that to happen to someone else. And I was like, well, shit, Kawami about to get skewered. Uh-oh. <laughs> Like, I, I was going through that going, I, I'm worried. Mika, go. Go. Yes, I'm not going to stop you. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Mika, <laughs> get out of here. They All don't right. know. They, the chat doesn't have context, so we just... No. We just and they're not going to get it. Ha, ha, ha. Out of, out of uh, nowhere, just told Mika to go away. Get out They'll of here. They'll be back. Get out of here, kid. Thank you, dog. So... I want to take some questions from the chat, but I'm going to give them some time to kind of get that going. And while we do, because we're getting, we're about to wrap this up. What was your favorite moment in the campaign? Like overall, it doesn't matter if it was a care moment with your character or another character, or if it was just like a funny out of character moment that happened on stream. Like what was a moment during this stream that just kind of is going to like, you just love it. I still really love the haunting of Lenny's uh second mansion oh, <laughs> that, yes! was so so that was a great episode that was so that much fun the secret so pool much fun. the secret jacuzzis the, the butler yeah who actually is immortal which is fun oh my god that was yeah that was really cool that was a great episode I also really liked um, the episode the first time we went to the dreaming and it was like the big sleepover party in our dorm. I can't remember if that was in season one or season two. That I must think have that been was season one. one. Yeah, yeah I, that was a great episode. Um, our first time meeting the sheep and like, like, yeah, I remember that one. Oh, oh and the, the super long pizza and, and the accident with the pizza. Like, yeah, that was a great episode too. I remember that one being a lot of fun. It's a fun tip. If your character's rich and it doesn't matter what the game is, you can you can do whatever you want because that's what being rich is. I mean, listen, there's nothing more fun than playing Vampire the Masquerade and making sure your character has all the little dots next to money just completely filled out. Okay, you just get away with every. You can just do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. What do I care? I'm rich. Mika, we're um we're saying our favorite uh some of our favorite moments of the entire campaign. Oh. Hmm. I mentioned the secret jacuzzi episode and also the episode where we very, the very first time we went to the dreaming. Um, yeah, I like the dreaming episode when we all got drunk. <laughs> you guys got drunk a handful of times. There was the time at the water park. There was the incident of the dreaming. Oh, the water park episode was, was so good. We, we the played water park episode was good. I think you did a really solid job of hitting all like the tropey things that I want. That I was like, oh, it's one of these episodes. I mean, it's an yeah, anime. I, I, I wanted anime episodes, and I will always love uh, Kwame just having a real heart to heart with Spiro, and then just pushing him down the water slide. Yep. <laughs> sure like, did. I can't remember. I think it was the. A second or third season i don't remember which one i think it was the second season uh where i think manny was like in charge of like we're like well we need to get an, a, a thing for like prom and then you i don't remember you went to like a video store or something to like buy something else and like do you have like scepters and the guy was like no no i don't i don't i don't carry that. it's like oh okay i guess i'll go to a different store now that had to have been the third season yeah no I think it was I think the second. Might have been the second one. Yeah, prom, prom was season was second two. season. Prom yeah, was because season two. because we closed we the door the, the and then the door it... of oblivion. That was the beginning of season three. Yeah. Season three with the with the with the with the um the sins or the, the mm -hmm. weird yeah. things. Oh yeah, no, I 
I remember the whole arc of like, of figuring out like nominate, how we were going to swing nominations for everybody yeah. in the group and, and man, just being like, I, I don't want a nomination. I just wanted to make sure that it was a possibility that I could be. <laughs> yeah. Lenny going against that was very charming as well. I think, yeah, because at that point, like, I think season one Lenny would have been like, yeah, sure, Prom King. But season two Lenny's like, I don't want that, right? Like, have, didn't I figure that out? Haven't, aren't we all on board with that? A couple of, a couple of moments that stick out to me. I remember the episode when Nick got introduced because all of, like, the art and stuff was starting to, like, attack and do weird stuff. And that was just a really cool, that was a really cool moment with, like, the TV and everything mm. uh i really i really liked that the uh the the scene with what's his name brendan brandon brendan brandon chuck brandon yeah the, the scene with brandon and lenny when lenny got got out the window was was pretty 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 nice everybody uh, was funny yes and that was the first time kwame felt jealous um oh I well, I had some other ones and I can't think off the top of my head. Um, I'll say this. I, I guess a series of moments. Um, it was it was something, and it's it's okay that it never got resolved. But I was almost expecting to have to make a new character um, when we started doing the keys with the uh, with the uh, the crows because I thought I firmly be believed that the more I turned the, these things into actual keys or whatever, that I was like killing myself. Like, I, I really thought that I had to do it. Um, glad it didn't happen, but I was like convinced. Full yeah. transparency. It was just like, I can't think of a way to end this that's one, satisfying, and two, not a bummer. So I kind of just let that one go away. But yeah, I, I did like that because it, it 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 made some really fun role playing of you like I have to do this, I have to kill myself destroying these keys. And it's like why? We 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 can do anything. You can do anything. We could find a different way. But then it was really cool to be able to so in the much. final episode bring those back. Be like, hey, I still have these, don't I? Here, let's help fight the devil. <laughs> um, also, um, uh, Dahlia and Spiro, like having the moment and and Spiro revealing that he was uh, the, a, he's asexual. He's a a, a, a romantic. Is, is he a romantic? Okay, he's a romantic. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, him revealing that he's a romantic, but was still there was still a clear connection between Dahlia and Spiro. That was really cool. Yeah, showing like arrow representation where it's not, he's not romantic avoidant. He just doesn't get intimacy from romance in the same way everyone else does. So he still feels it. It's just not like his main way of like yeah. finding that intimacy. And so he can still provide it for, for uh, Dahlia. It was really nice. Yeah, yeah. I uh, every conversation that Manny and and Dahlia ever had always just made my heart very very full. Um, I love them so much. Their friendship meant everything to me. Yeah, little sleepovers we had in um, Manny's room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Manny, yeah. Manny's room always ended up being the hangout spot. Yeah. So we do have. Uh, we have another question from the chat. If your character could switch divinity with someone else, whose would you choose? That is a big one. I feel like personally, I don't I don't think Dahlia would want to switch. I think she really likes Persephone, but for me, I want to have wings. So I'd choose my aunt. Yeah. I will, I will say, like, when, when I saw, like, what Aki was doing with Manny and, and, and I was, it, like, shifting what I was doing with Lenny while everyone was introducing stuff, I was like, okay, but that's fun, though. Like, that's, that's really, like, just this sort of, like, you know, space cadet who, like, but is, like, s smart and wise and, like, 
cares about the truth. I was like, that's that's awesome. Yeah, it's just being like, I got a cool wing and and sh- and shield and sword, and you know, I can, I'm a lie detector. That's great. So it's funny because I was also going to say my because <laughs> I I, thought I built I built a Kawame to be a silver tongue. So picture a silver tongue who tries to get by, which means lying and doing all the things, and then having a literal lie detector, like, at you're wrong. At that's false. Think but the thing wrong. is, Manny never, ever, like, tried to publicly call, uh, that, like, that, that just wasn't their style. It's like, yeah. I don't think they ever really came up to, to um, Kwame and were like, you're full oh. of shit. Like, they, they kind of let him do his thing. Let him because they were an enabler, like you know, and that's why Manny deserved (laughs) Ma'at. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that, like, if if I played Kawame the exact same way I did, but instead of Anansi, he had Ma'at, he would just get called out 24 7. Oh, I would have played her like the most disappointed mom, (laughs) (laughs) like, literally, you just see, like, um. Like almost like Pinocchio in a sense, like he'll say something and he has like a red X just appears over his head. He doesn't even realize it. And he's like, "Yep, okay, cool, great." <laughs> he's like, "Live your truth." I am. Fuck. <laughs> I do love that. So um, interestingly oh. enough, um, Persephone is not Perse- or Persephone is probably who I would have chosen specifically because you, Mika, were playing the type of character that I usually play. Like I tried to send Manny in a very different direction than I, than like you. I think I might have told you this, but like uh, Dolly reminded me so much of my character from the first iteration of of um, New Pantheon. Uh, Will Will and Dahlia would have been best fucking friends. Like absolutely. the two of them would have absolutely adored each other. Both short nature kids that were like, yeah, Will and Dahlia would have been great friends. Um, Will and Dahlia probably would have dated. Um, <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, like, um, so I think I think Persephone and Brigid uh, would have been would have been a lot of fun for Manny. Uh, they would have. I think they would have enjoyed that. And Anansi, I think, would also have been. It would have been interesting to see the two of them switched. Yeah, like that. That that would have been very fun. I I I don't have a lot of regrets in my life, but I do regret not doing a body swap episode. Oh, my God. That would have been a that nightmare. Been out of control. That would have been so bad. Stretch so, goal? Stretch goal, anybody? <laughs> Give maybe. us 500 of those right now. We'll make it happen. I've always I'm wanted just, to do that. I'm, I'm just imagining the Scooby-Doo live action movie when they all swap souls. Yeah. And Fred's mm-hmm. like, all right. <laughs> Steven ran a home game. Uh, it didn't last super long, but two of the two of the players uh, made characters and then switched sheets. Uh, and the idea is that their characters swapped bodies. So they made characters specifically for the other person that they knew they wouldn't like playing. Uh, oh, no. It's like, like, oh no, They're I'm married. stuck in this body. <laughs> They're married, so they knew exactly what they were doing. Okay. That's good. It was like a, it was like, yeah, it was like a, a, a like a, a red Sonia type warrior woman and a, a fuzzy dwarf at swapping bodies. <laughs> wow. Very charming. Um, so as we are getting towards the end of this little talk back, um, be right UK and five foot Latina. Thank you both for your uh, donations during this game. Uh, not this, well, this game, for sure, but during this little talk back of ours, uh, if you have a message, you know, uh, we'll try to address that soon. Um, now, this isn't the end for New Pantheon. This is the end of New Pantheon Academia. So we will be back. Uh, we're still discussing what that will look like, but we are figuring that out. And so uh, stay tuned to Saving Throw Show. Um, until then. Uh, special thanks to Rookie Jet Studios for making Overarms the system we used. Uh, it was it's designed to be for like Persona and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which is two things that I borrowed heavily from for this campaign. So great system for it, and you know, it pretty easy. A bizarre adventure. It was a bizarre adventure. Um, 
CB, where can they find you? Uh, everywhere, right? Uh, you can find me at Critical Bard. I do too much. Uh, you can specifically find me tomorrow on twitch.tv slash fearhq um, for the Council of the Gods. I, I, I'm not going to reveal who I'm playing yet um, because it hasn't been revealed yet. Uh, but I will be there. Uh, and I'm excited. Uh, so yeah, and uh, you also can find me. Oh, uh, that was all on the NDA. Just watch socials. There's some cool things coming up soon. Spoiler That's alert: me. they are a god on a council. Uh, mostly Eric. Where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on mostly Eric on all the social medias on the internets that I happen to be on, which is most of them. Uh, and uh, they can catch me uh, tonight, 730 Pacific Standard Time, every Sunday on twitch.tv slash BNB Tabletop, where uh, for the board barrel, where we're playing, we play board games. We're playing Wonderland Wars, uh, which Ooh. I'm excited to play. Very fun. Also, fun note, I don't know if I mentioned that I ever mentioned this. Uh, I'm. I made a conscious effort not to swear as Lenny, and I think I didn't swear as him him on purpose until like season four. And I don't know if that ever <laughs> actually. Made, you made it a very long time, whereas yeah. Manny on what? the opposite end of there Manny had a potty mouth than most of anybody at the table. I think yeah, season four when 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 all that stuff was happening, I was like, I don't think he cares as much about swearing. <laughs> nice. At this point, why would they? Uh, Aki, where can they find you? Oh, you can find me at, on Twitter at MixGenie in a Bottle. That's M-X-G-I-N-I-I-N-A-B-O-T-T-L-E. I'm not doing too much right now. In fact, every single show I am on, with the exception of one, is currently on hiatus or in development. <laughs> um, or we just got started with pre-recording, so it hasn't aired yet. But there are some, there are some announcements coming down the pipeline, and hopefully... Uh, some some good news coming uh, your way, and I'm excited about all the projects that I I'm currently developing, um, or that are on hiatus that will be coming back soon. But your boy has time, and they're not really happy about it. So if you've got something going on and you need somebody at your table, holler at your boy. I got I got time. And Mika currently uh, picking up a doggy. Hello, doggy. Oh my. Gosh. Mika, I don't care where I can find you. Tell me where I can find the dog. Right here. Yay! Um, Who's baby? No, seriously, where can we find you? Mika, and this is Honeybee. You can find me on my stream uh, any day around like noon to 3 p.m. I don't really have a set time. And then tomorrow on Fear HQ for the Council of the Gods, I'll be there with CB. Woo. And she'll be here all the time. Oh my goodness, look at her. She's so beautiful. Well, she is a dog, and sadly, dogs do not have the ability to stream on Twitch yet. Um, not yet. Not yet. You can actually find me on Twitch at The Professional Hobbit. Right now, I've been streaming uh, Dead by Daylight because uh, I found out they added uh, Ringu content, and then I found out one of the characters was gay, so I had to start playing it. Um, apart from that, you can check me out, check me out on TikTok at The Professional Hobbit. And also check out Queers, uh, the new game from Son of Oak Studios. Uh, we are gunning to have this game available to the market by September. So uh, check that out. Writing's done. We're just kind of uh, doing some last minute stuff. Don't want to get myself in trouble, so I'm going to shut up. Um, before we call it a night, I just want to thank the four of you so much for being here with me doing this game i don't have i don't do a lot of shows i'm not a name by any stretch but having this game and doing this with the four of you was so special and i'm really going to cherish new pantheon academia and everything we did and i want to thank our viewers for sticking with us for uh, uh a lot of hours in high school with a lot of drama it was a silly silly fun time uh Special thanks to Pete Grether for making our wonderful theme song. I wish I could play us out. I cannot. But uh, yes, so take care of yourself. Have a great summer. And we will see you soon 
for a D and D one shot ran by a Nazi because that is happening, and we also have to set up that time to make Critical Bard watch anime because for the children. <laughs> I couldn't end this camp. I couldn't end this campaign without getting one more death there. Oh no! <laughs> Goodbye, CD. I, I, I think his it. phone ran out of battery. Oh no! It's a, it's back. Oh, there he is. Okay, we got him back. All right. Hey. Oh my goodness, look at this baby. Hi, baby. And it's a doggy. Hey, so, sweet baby. Oh my goodness. What a good baby you are. Well, Aki <gasps> has their uh, puppy moment. Just thank you all very much. And we will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Mwah. Good night.